for it. Yes, just asking for a bigger. Well, it gives me straight. Yeah. Got, uh, I always want to say something bad about him. 25. SL550. That's a really nice wood steering wheel. What a car. What a paint job. Look at that. Flat bottom. Really nice dealer. G Class. And a smart car. Well, 43, it was just 45 a minute ago, is the warmest I've seen that for a while. So we got up to um, Mercedes Benz of Bedford today and got the battery for the smart car. The one he had in there was some generic, like, Everlast. It wasn't Everlast, but it was like Power Volt or some kind of battery. Um, I didn't look at a cold cranking amp rating, but it had one less amp to it. It was only a 61 amp 12 volt instead of a 62 that the Daimler uh, Mercedes-Benz battery is. It was $149. They uh, prorated it to $119. He was wearing his World War II hat, and the guy said he was a veteran too, so they gave him a discount. Let me say this. Let me say this. The people at Mercedes-Benz of Bedford and their building and facilities are very nice and solid 15 to 30 percent better than BMW. Let me say that Mercedes has a better dealership and a better dealership experience than BMW does. Now I say that in the most generic of terms. I know the people at my BMW dealer pretty well. I come in, we're on a first name basis, they cut the crap and ask, you know, what's up, how's the car? Not, hey, how can we help you? What do you need from us? I'm beyond that with them. So maybe that's skewing my experience. If I knew all the Mercedes people, they, I may get in there and get offered a cigar or something due to Mercedes owners, I don't know. But um, really nice, really professional, really helpful, really friendly, good experience. Got that, came back, put it in the smart car. No big deal, right? A battery should have a positive and a ground cable to it, and it should take no more than 15 minutes to install a battery. No, no, it took us nearly two hours. One, that's the heaviest battery I think I've ever lifted. Mine is almost twice as big as the smart car battery, but I guarantee it's lighter, one. And two, it's located down under the um, the sloped part of the passenger footwell. So you've got to disassemble all of the carpet and stuff. That only takes five minutes. But then there's this clamp that goes over top of the battery to keep it from sliding around or otherwise getting cocked over down in the footwell. Okay, so that has a 10 millimeter socket. No big deal, you take that off. But then, then, you know, they decided that two wires, we need more. Two isn't good enough, we need more than two wires. Eight, there's eight wires to plug into that battery. Two terminals, and then all of these little brown wires that I assume are ground, because they're ground into the same stud in the frame that the, the ground terminal cable is. But my God, everything's in the way, everything's connected. It was dicked, it was dicked, but it's done and it works, and I told him that if he calls me this week and said that he left the lights on or something in the shed, I'm gonna hang up on him. Not really, but it sucked, so. Okay, that was today. Then we went to Bob Evans, we went to Lowe's, and we had to buy, uh, where do we buy a Lowe's? Oh, a remote. We had to buy a remote control. And the AT&T U-verse is cocked over. Their phone doesn't work, the internet doesn't work, and the TV doesn't work. So I tether my phone to my Mac, log into the online profile to see what's up. No big deal, there's nothing wrong. The bill's paid, it says there's no holds on the account. Reboot the modem that controls all of that. That doesn't do anything. So I called AT&T, got a really nice support lady over there, Sandy, sounded like she was next door instead of the next continent over. Talked with her. Uh, they're like, oh yeah, something must be cocked over on the street. We're gonna send a dude out between now and Monday. So Super Bowl Sunday tomorrow, not like they care, but I mean, they're leaving their customers without service for days, which is ridiculous. And that's the second time this has happened in the last six months too. Sorry for bitching, I'm on my way home. So I'll talk to you later. That's good timing for this track on the CD, but that's a 183000. Oh, oh, uh oh. Focus. Yeah, that makes February 1st, 183,000. All right, good hello. Um, just after three o'clock in the morning. Oh my God, I have not been up this long for a while. Uh, it used to be, used to be the late evening for me. Then school started and I started to be a little bit more responsible. Well, Colt came over at 12 after work. Hung out, talked a lot, had some oatmeal. 
because it's cold in here. Um, watch the Cleveland show. <laughs> that's, that's about it. I don't know how we filled three hours with that, but we did. He just left. Um, I'm going to get my stuff. I have a lot of stuff downstairs. Maybe you can tell I'm tired. I slept like four hours and I'm still up for some reason. Um, I got my belt and I got, a, got the Mac over there somewhere and I got a camera and I got a watch and my phone and I got to fill my pockets. I'm tired. All right. I'm going upstairs. Um, I'm probably going to get a shower in the morning. Tomorrow's going to be a YouTube catch-up day. That's probably about it. Um, the heat feels good. You got to register right there. If you stand on that, it fills your pants up with warm air. It's really good. It's very comfortable. All right, I'm going to get something to drink and go to bed. So I'll talk to you guys tomorrow, Sunday. Today was productive, though. We got the battery in the smart car. Mercedes dealer was nice. Talked about that already. And that's it. All right. Good night.